In this video, my mission is to show you how to build a holistic container of support for your yoga classes so you can raise your prices, take students beyond the poses, and really step into your role as a spiritual leader in your community so that students show up to class consistently. We learn step by step how to manifest the right students to help you grow your practice and to create more change and transformation in their lives in a sustainable way. I am Sarah. I have been practicing for 23 years. I have been teaching for 13. I have eight different yoga certifications. I'm a Reiki energy healer and a holistic life coach. And I can tell you that it's super realistic to build a sustainable and profitable yoga business. And in this class, I'm going to show you exactly how to do that, how I did that, and how I've helped many of my students do that as well. Well, this class is for you if you're looking to create a profitable yoga business. This class is for you if you just graduated yoga teacher training, if you are a part-time teacher and maybe have a couple of other jobs on the side, or if you already teaching full-time but feel like you're not making enough money, or you have a yoga studio and you still feel like burnt out from teaching so much and still struggling to pay your bills. This class is not for you if you're looking to become super famous on the internet and be a big shot yoga teacher. This class is not for you if you are looking to have classes filled with like 300 students or if you think that yoga should be free or cheap, then this class is not for you because I do believe that yoga has value and we as yoga teachers deserve to make a good living teaching and helping people grow and evolve and rise in light and love. This class is also for any wellness professional who is maybe an acupuncturist, a massage therapist, a Reiki energy healer, holistic life coach, a relationship coach, or anyone with a wellness practice. But it's really mostly geared to, to yoga teachers because I myself have eight different yoga teacher certification. When I first started, I started with hot yoga in my 20s. And then I went on to get a 200 hour vinyasa certification. And when I graduated, I didn't really feel ready. So I signed up for a 300 hour. And that was very helpful. I learned restorative yoga and structural yoga therapy and a lot of things. But somehow I still felt like something was missing. So I actually signed up for another 200 hour an Ashtanga certification, which was also a lot of fun. I remember walking into a yoga class one day and meeting an Iyengar teacher and she was telling me to do certain things in my poses that I've never really learned before. And I studied with her for about three years. Um, and then in addition to that, I was blessed to meet a true teacher of love and light, a shaman who trained me as a Reiki master practitioner and energy healer. So to prove to you that this class actually works, I'm going to share with you some inspiring stories of students who have gone through this program and and really had success creating their own successful yoga business. I was able to quit my part-time job and fully focus on the studio. One program that I led paid for what it cost me for her program. For last year, I only had six members. Now I have 10 this month. Plus I have eight signed up between two different series that I'm running, which was at maybe five or six right before her and I got together a month or two in. I mean, that's tripled since last year she was like you gotta share it and i'm like no i don't want to I, you know like i had a full career i was you know thank god i shifted because it's much more in line with how i want to experience my life i have like 15 to 20 clients on average it's you know it's like a cyclical type of thing it's always constantly changing hour of coaching and an hour of yoga it's 1600 dollars for eight sessions which eight two-hour sessions from starting working with sarah to now this moment. I had increased my year over year revenue by 41%. I teach close to 20 classes a week, so I can keep track of 20 people. I started with zero and I have eight, which is huge to me. So I've gone through and decluttered and cleaned in my yard and my house. I walk every day, I eat better, I'm more focused on my clients, the meditating, yoga. I feel confident, like I'm not scared. This is my sole income. The first client that I went through my system with and you know we met weekly and I, I sort of used Sarah's method of just like slow and steady wins the race. It had huge impacts and the woman couldn't believe, you know, she'd been struggling with things that the doctors told her, oh, this is normal. Oh, this is just, you're gonna live with it. You know, it shouldn't be such a big deal. Why does it bother you so much? When I watched her 
problems go away that she'd been watching since she started going through puberty, you know, she had had these issues and she's in her 60s. And and in, let's say, four to six weeks, she was seeing significant improvement. I'm like, this is amazing. Like, that's not even a long time. <laughs> Our goal from the beginning for me to be able to quit by May 1st this year, because I had opened the studio back up on May 1st, but I actually, um, my last day at my part-time job, I think it was February, I brought in about 5,000 for the month. So my daughter, my 14 year old also works with me. She is very, um, she's an old soul and, soul and she has this natural gift of, you know, healing. She's working with me now doing sound. Plays right along and does an amazing job and kind of fills in when I'm doing different things. So it's super great. So let me tell you a little bit about how I got into this yoga business. I was working at the water company and I really wanted to quit my job and I loved yoga so much and I just wanted to share it with people. And kept teaching on the side, but I just couldn't see how I was going to make enough money to replace my corporate income. And one day I was working on a project at work and I had worked really hard on it. And this colleague of mine went and presented the project as his to the CEO. And I, I was a little upset, but I just, you know, took a deep breath and, and said nothing and said, okay, you know what? He can go ahead and present it as his own. And next thing I know, the cost of the project was showing up in my budgets department and I just kind of lost it. I was like, oh my God, I am so done with this corporate world. Like just so many sharks and so many shades and so much drama. And I quit because I was just a little bit sick of being in the corporate world, but I honestly still had no idea exactly how I was going to make this yoga business work. So I signed up for a 500 hour certification and then a couple of mentorship programs. And I started to learn a little bit about how to run a yoga business. But the reality was I was trying and trying all sorts of different things, but kept stumbling. Um, students just didn't show up to class consistently. I couldn't charge enough. I was working, probably teaching 25, 30 hours plus three hours of worth of driving per day. And I was seeing just so many people that I was feeling really burnt out. So it didn't matter how much I thought there was simply not enough way for me to make enough money to pay my bills. So at the time I was a single mom, I had two little kids and I didn't have time for them. I was absolutely exhausted after driving so much every day, teaching at all of these different studios. And I was was starting to get like a little bit resentful because I would see the change that I was creating in people's life, how their anxiety went away, their depression went away. They were happier in their relationships, in their jobs, with their husbands, with their kids. And here I was just really tired each and every day, struggling to pay my bills. And so in 2014, I went out and I took a class out. I went to Arizona and I took a class on how to run a yoga business and it sounded good in theory but even though I knew what the logistics were I still had a lot of energy blocks in regards to money in regards to my own self-esteem as a teacher and the value of what I gave people and so I, I limped along for a long time and I did learn a lot, but it still felt very frustrating to not be able to get my business off the ground. But after a lot of struggle, I went ahead and I opened up my little yoga studio and I kind of made it work. First, I started with space that's probably as small as this one where I could just fit maybe six, nine people. And... I was doing okay. I was charging maybe $20, $27 a class or something like that, which was actually expensive for my area, but I still couldn't get students to show up consistently to class. Sometimes I would show up, there'll be two or three students, and I would start to question all my life choices all over again. And I did manage through a lot of hard work, hard work to grow that studio to about 2,100 square feet. I had a classroom, I had a Reiki room, I had an office, two bathrooms. Like it was 
absolutely beautiful. But because I wasn't making enough money and I wasn't really able to pay the bills, once again, I was feeling a little burnt out and a little resentful. So thank goodness at the end of 2019, I was guided to just close the studio. And it was heartbreaking to me, to be honest, because I had worked so hard to build it. But I was guided to just pack up my things and move from New Jersey, where I was living, to Utah, where I am now. And so I landed here January 2020, and I started to try to learn how to teach online. But I knew nothing about the online world. I knew nothing of social media. I knew nothing about doing an online yoga program. I just knew Zoom. That's, that's all I knew. And so I signed up for a couple of classes online and I was really excited. I remember the first course that I bought um, was really expensive and basically she just wanted me to raise my prices, which I was able to do. And I was lucky at the time to get at least one student who paid me $2,700 for my first nine day course. And she was amazing. I First of all, when I sold her the program, I was a little bit like, oh my goodness, I can't believe she just bought this. This is a huge responsibility. That's a lot of money that I just collected. Is she really going to get the transformation that I want her to get? Because she was a little bit older. She had wrist issues. She knew that she didn't like yoga and she stepped in a little bit reluctantly. But because she signed up for the 90 days and because she had paid me $2,700, she showed up really willing, ready, and able to learn. And so even though she had her doubts, because she showed up and she invested in herself and she made that commitment, I was able to actually get her past that honeymoon period that students go through. She was able to get through that hump to the other side. So when I saw the change in her life, of how much she changed from within and she became more calm and she became more confident. She actually had the courage to quit her job, which was a big deal. She was an energy practitioner and actually she ended up doing this mentorship program and creating her own wellness practice. That's how powerful it was to be able to upgrade the way in which I was teaching. I decided I'm never going back to $10 classes from now on. I want less students who pay me more money so that I can give them more sustainable transformation. And I'm not overwhelmed by having to manage so many energies from dozens, maybe hundreds of students trying to make a living. But the thing was, that was like one lucky client that I got when I signed up for that first business coaching program. And what I discovered was that there was a lot more to the journey ahead. I discovered that if I wanted to do this in a sustainable way, I was going to have to learn marketing. I was going to have to learn how to create a website and do a landing page and something called a funnel, which at the time I didn't know what the heck a funnel was. And, you know, for those of you who know, it's basically just having a clear path of enrollment of each student, when they come in and they show a little bit of interest, you just lead them to the next step effortlessly. But I didn't know any of this. So I was just out there posting on social media, you know, pretty pictures of yoga and pretty quotes, and it wasn't getting me results. So then I decided to invest in a marketing program to kind of try and learn how to do all of this. And I learned a lot and I finally started getting leads, which was really exciting because I was getting, you know, 10, 20 leads a day of people asking for, you know, yoga information and information about my yoga programs. But what I didn't realize at the time is that leads are not enough. You actually have to be able to walk those leads through the door and enroll them in this holistic container of support. So then I proceeded to invest another full of grand in a sales course to teach me how to present my offer to people, how to communicate my value, how to stay neutral through the enrollment and the interview conversation when they come in through the door to help them make an empowered decision to create change in their life. But the whole time that I'm going through this process and I'm going through these training programs, there's a couple of things that just don't feel quite right to me. 
Number one is a lot of the groups are really big and I get very lost in the Zoom calls and nobody's really taking the time to understand my business, understand what it is that I do. A lot of these marketing people use fear-based techniques for getting people in the door, scarcity techniques. It feels a little pushy, a little salesy. So I was doing what they were telling me to do, but somewhere inside me, it just didn't quite feel right. So after a lot of struggle trying to just follow what everybody else was telling me to do, I decided to just go within and use my own inner wisdom and my own intuition to see with all the techniques that I had learned, because they're good and they're helpful, but how can I integrate those techniques and align them in a way that feels good to me? And so that is how I really started to see success by taking some of those marketing techniques and some of that knowledge, which is necessary, but merging it with my spirit and making sure that it was energetically and spiritually aligned. And it was when I did that, that I, my business really began to thrive because now I was operating from the right place energetically. And when I did that, then I started to get students consistently and I ran out of time in my schedule again. So I tweaked my program structure a little bit, but even then I needed some help. So I hired two teachers who had graduated from my own yoga teacher training certification program. And I asked them to start teaching for me. But what I discovered was now I had two problems. I have, first of all, students were coming to me, but I was handing them over to someone else. And that didn't quite feel right. And second of all, the teachers who were teaching were feeling really good about themselves because they had all of the students, but in reality, they hadn't really done the work to recruit and enroll those students. Right? So uh, when I saw that, I decided to just shift again, right? Because that's what we do as energy healers and as yoga teachers. We're always learning. We get to one place and then we are told what the next step is. And so that's how this mentorship program was born. I decided that I didn't really want to have teachers teaching for me, that I just wanted to teach teachers how to get their own students. Because to me, that student-teacher relationship is sacred and precious. And yoga is not something that you can McDonaldize. Yoga is something that you really have to establish that relationship with your student and be there to support them and love them and guide them through their healing process. And it's from that place that transformation actually happens. So now this is what I do. I help teachers just like you do what I did and what I've helped other students do. So you can go out and get your own students and create a sustainable and profitable yoga business without the burnout. So just to give you an idea, nowadays I get maybe 20, 30 leads a week. I take six, eight phone calls of people who want to interview for my programs. My programs range anywhere from $1,800, $3,600, $5,400, $8,100, depending on the length of the program that I'm offering. And I just have everything on autopilot. I enroll, you know, four, six new students every month, and I'm probably going to hit multiple six figures this year with this method. So I'm not saying it's going to happen overnight. I'm just saying that there is a way. And if you're willing to learn and you're going to willing to put in the work, just keep watching. I'll tell you exactly how I did it and exactly how you can do it. One of the biggest mistakes that I see out there is teachers offering classes by donation or for free or for really, really cheap because they think that cheap is better and that the cheaper they offer their classes, the more students they're going to get. And I have a little bit of an energy problem with that because we live in a world where people value money and it is not karmatically or energetically correct to give the most precious thing on earth for cheap or for free when people are going out there and buying TVs and boats and vacations and houses and cars and they're spending all of this money and prioritizing all of these worldly things and not really prioritizing their own inner work, their health, their well-being, their inner peace. And so 
when we go ahead and we lead with confidence and we say what we offer is valuable and you're going to teach them beyond the poses and you're going to explain to them exactly what the benefits of yoga are because a lot of the times people don't even realize the true benefits of yoga they think it's just a little bit of stretching but when you go ahead and you lead with confidence and you present your offer in a way that says what i have to give to you is the most valuable thing on earth and you take the time to understand them and you take the time to explain why yoga is going to help them, then really things begin to change. Um, and you don't have to keep your corporate job and you don't have to keep working all of this, you know, doing DoorDash or doing all of these extra things to try and make them ends meet. You could actually show up to teach with love because you have it to give because you're not burned out you're not selling your soul to a corporate office and then going to teach for free on the side so when you fix the energetics of how you present yourself as a teacher and you begin to lead with confidence then you also fix the finances of your business so let's do some numbers real quick in order to make 10 grand a month you would need 500 students at $20 a class. That's 125 students a week. There is no way on earth that any one yoga teacher can genuinely uplift 125 people per week. You cannot teach that many people and stay balanced in your own energy. So then what ends up happening is you're teaching, but you're teaching from a little bit of a shallow place. You cannot take them deeper because you simply don't have the energy to give. And they are not taking responsibility and accountability for the journey that they are on and the healing that they have to do. So let's say your program was $1,000. You need 10 students you know, instead of 500 in order to make your 10 grand a month. Let's say your program is $2,000. You need five students a month. And those five students come to you really ready, willing, and able to learn because they invested in themselves and they took responsibility to say, yes, I need help and I'm going to follow your lead, which then allows you to be rested when you show up to class and actually have the energy to help these people and Open your heart completely and give wholeheartedly without holding back because you have it to give, because you're not stressed about how you're going to pay your rent next month. So it really benefits both. It benefits the student to create more sustainable transformation and participate in their healing process. And it helps you to create more stability in your business and serve them better. But first, we also have to raise the standards of our teaching. We're going to raise the way in which we give students the knowledge that they need. We're going to teach them that yoga goes beyond the poses. Yoga includes breathing. Yoga includes the yamas and the niyamas. Yamas. Yoga will teach you how do your mind works, how to manage your emotions. We have to give them all of that so that they can value it and begin to pay you more for your program. So it's not just raise your prices. It's raise the way that you teach, give the students more, which then allows you to raise your prices from a place of integrity. And when I started, I started my first program, like I said before, it was $2,700. But if that feels like so out there to you that you don't see how that's going to happen, it's okay. We can start with, you know, $300 programs, $900 programs. So even if you start small with a program that's $500 or something small, it will give you the confidence to step forward as a teacher and begin to really see the change that you create in people's lives and then little by little you'll go from there so just to give you an idea of where I am right now I have about 30 students on my roster for all of my programs I teach about 25 30 hours a week and then I spend a couple of hours doing the lead generation and doing you know the interview process for the students that are calling in and it's it's really not rocket science but it's also not a get rich quick scheme. It's something that little by little, I'm going to teach you everything that you need to know to build it with the right foundation and then grow from there. I had a mentor once tell me, you don't get a student to make a sale. 
you make a sale to get a student. And I thought that was really interesting because a lot of the times we think of this business part of our business as if we have to go chase people and we feel a little bit icky that, you know, come and learn yoga so I can have some money to pay my bills. And that just feels, ugh, I'm not sure how, just, just not good. When in reality, what's happening is if you're in the right place, if you're in the right mindset, you realize that what you have is valuable. When they come to you, you're able to communicate that value. And you need to make that sale because if you don't make that sale and the student doesn't commit up front, you don't have anyone to teach. So we need to kind of flip the way that we're looking at our business and understand that we need to show up to serve and that the money exchange between student and teacher is just neutral. It's just something that needs to happen because we're in a society that this is just how things work. So if you're in a neutral place and you're able to communicate your value and enroll a student and make the sale, now you get to teach. And at some point in our growth, that is simply the next step that we as teachers need to go through in order to continue to evolve. What we teach is not something that you can hoard. It's something that has to be given away. So you need students in order for you to continue to grow as a human, as a person, as a teacher. Whenever you teach something that you've learned, you get to relearn it and you get to grow. And that is why it's so important to sign up people right at the door, because there's also a psychological effect that happens when they sign up for the that holistic container of support and they agree to be your student and you agree to be their teacher. It creates a little sacred container for you to support them, which also kind of, I don't want to say forces you, but it makes you show up as a better person because you took that money and therefore you, you, you are now taking responsibility to be a good teacher. So you raise your standards and you show up differently. If as a teacher, you go out and you do classes by donation and nobody shows up, when you show up to teach, you're not at the top of your game because maybe you're just a little tired and a little upset that nobody showed up even though you're giving it away for free but when you collect money and you made a promise to them that you're going to help them to go from here to there in 90 days now all of a sudden you show up with more power you show up more serious to teach and they show up more open so it really benefits everyone the other mistake that ends up happening is when uh, people buy a 12 class card there's a psychological effect of i have these classes that i now bought and i'm going to keep in my pocket and whenever i'm in the mood i'm going to go ahead and go to yoga and if they're not in the mood they don't want to spend their class card where if you do what i'm suggesting which is to create that container of support and sign them up at the door for a complete program and get paid up front because the program has a specific time line in which it has to be completed they get invested their energy is now feels a little bit like okay i have to do this now because time is gonna run out eventually and so they begin to show up to class a lot more consistently which then gives them results which then makes them love you which then makes them keep coming again and again because they're showing up so they're seeing results as opposed to trying to just save their class cards for a rainy day. And that's important because there is a honeymoon period. When people first come to yoga, they find the answer to life and they really have found the answer to life, right? But after a few classes, they have to actually go within. They begin to feel, they begin to awaken, they begin to see things differently. I mean, we all have been there when we're in our yoga mat, just bawling, crying for no reason in and you just want to run away and you want to go back to the ice cream and the drinking and the partying and whatever other method you were using to disconnect from your pain right that's what happens to students and that's why they quit halfway after you know two three classes they begin to just skip classes because they don't want to face themselves when you offer to be their teacher and you sign them up for these journeys up front and they invest in themselves that commitment and that money that they paid is gonna get them to keep going so that they can get to the other side with a honeymoon period, 
through the discomfort and to actual sustainable transformation. So the first thing that we need to do in order to fix this class card situation and flaky attendance is to create a holistic container of support. You see, in the past, um, yogis used to study with their guru for 12 years and go through every layer of the self. Now people think that yoga is just about stretching and let's face it, that's not really their fault, is it? That is us as yoga teachers failing to communicate what yoga is really all about. So the first thing that we're going to do is create a program that takes students beyond the poses, just like if it was a class at school, at college, where you go and the professor gives you a syllabus of exactly what the steps are going to be and what we're going to cover in this course and what their expectations are and what the objectives are. So when they come in, you give them a syllabus of exactly what you're going to cover and the things that you're going to teach them, whether that's about the chakras or pranayama or the yamas and niyamas and all these things that people don't even know are part of yoga. And I want you to do this specific homework, whether that is journaling or workbooks or watching a video two, three times a week, whatever it is. When you do that for a student, you will be so surprised at what a huge difference it makes. They just feel like, oh my goodness, there's a method to the madness. They're not just going out there and stretching their hamstrings and suffering for no reason. When you are able to explain to them that they're suffering for a reason, <laughs> that there is a way to achieve enlightenment. We start with the hamstrings and stretching a little bit, but on the side, you're also giving them all the other pieces that are so important to yoga and such an integral part of yoga philosophy and what the journey is really all about. Then students begin to show up excited because they feel like, oh my goodness, there's a reason for this. And they're more likely and more willing to participate in the process. When that happens, they get more results. When they get more results, they tend to stay because they're actually seeing the benefits, partly because you took the time to un to explain it to them up front. So they understand why it is necessary to put in that consistent effort. You didn't just open the door and say, here's my schedule, here's my prices, come whenever you like. You explain to them what it was going to take for them to actually see that change that they're looking for. So when you do this, what happens is you are going above and beyond what everyone else in town is doing. You are taking them deeper into yoga philosophy. You are helping them to be more accountable for a consistent practice. You are helping them awaken from within and really heal those things that they have been avoiding for a long time. And that really is the most beautiful thing that we can do. And it's all based on creating this holistic container of support that sets the tone right at the door for the students to do their part as you lead with confidence. The second step to building your yoga business is becoming a spiritually aligned leader. A lot of the times um, people graduate from yoga teacher training programs and they just don't feel confident in their ability. Why? Because we're basically trying to teach people the spiritual path to enlightenment. And after, you know, even if you did a six month year long yoga teacher training, you certainly don't feel that you're enlightened. Even I, after 23 years of practice and 13 years of teaching, every now and then I wake up and I show up to teach and I'm feeling emotional and I, my mind is a little unstable and I'm sitting here saying, oh my God, I'm a fake. What am I teaching? I don't even have the head to teach today. But what I discovered through all these years is that a high school has a lot to teach to a kindergartner. You don't have to have all the knowledge in the world. You just have to have what you know. You probably found the path of yoga because you were struggling and suffering with something. And so we're going to create a program that helps with that because he helped you with that and you know that part very well. So then you teach what you know. You don't have to know it all. You create a program that is for you and for them. By showing up again and again to teach, 
you also have to live it yourself, which then helps you to continue to grow. And so we show up and we teach what we know. And I don't want you to worry about, oh, what am I going to teach? Trust me, you know a lot more than 90% of the humans out there. So let's just go teach what you what helped you and you're going to be okay. Teaching is necessary because we oftentimes are being called to teach what we know. So we are born into this earth. We had certain struggles. We found yoga. They helped us with these struggles. And now there's an inner calling in your heart that says, go teach this. It got you out of suffering. It can get the next person out of suffering. But we can really only fulfill our dharma that way if the logistics and the finances are okay and the structure is okay and our schedule is okay and we're not burnt out. If you don't have the business part of it right, then you cannot fulfill your dharma. So don't worry about how, what you need to teach. Just trust that if you're listening to this and you are trying to learn how to create a yoga business, is because there's a part of you that knows that this is the way and all you have to do is trust it and follow it and trust yourself that if it got you this far and you feel you have something good to do give to the world when you step forward and lead with confidence the students will come because you're aligned with your dharma and you're fulfilling your dharma and that's just how the universe and energy works through that process you are growing as a human as a person as a spirit as a teacher and your students, the students that are ready to learn from you will show up if you are spiritually aligned. But what I discovered through all these years is that showing up is what makes you a teacher, that consistency, showing up whether you're feeling great or not, whether you're feeling healthy or not, whether you're feeling stable or not. When you show up again and again and you ask your students to show up again and again, that right there is 90% of the value that you bring to your classroom. Another thing that happens when you show up to teach from a spiritually aligned place is that energy begins to flow through you. So there is a beauty to the collective consciousness. It can be used for negative fear, like we have seen out in the world, but it could also be used to uplift groups of people. So when you show up consistently and you have students that show up consistently, that collective energy rises everyone in the group, yourself included. So when you go and you show up to teach, you have to show up as a leader and you have to show up with confidence. And when you create a container of support that is structured right at the door, what you end up with is you end up with a more cohesive community of students that is really coming together in true love and light. And it's rising together simply because you're providing the structure and the consistency and the leadership that they need. And the other thing that happens when we don't lead with confidence is we end up burning out because the truth of the matter is we are givers. We are attracted to these professions because we are givers. If you wanted to just make money, you would sell stuff on Amazon or do who knows something else, keep your corporate job or whatever. We are givers. And so we show up with an open heart, but that also means that oftentimes we attract takers. And if we have people taking and taking and taking from us without respect, without putting in their part of the equation, which is that commitment and accountability, without providing an energetic and monetary exchange, then what we're actually doing is we're teaching them to be a little lazy. We're teaching them to be a little greedy. I know this sounds rough, but that's just the truth. We live in a society that loves bargains and loves to get something for nothing. And that is indeed actually a form of greed. So when we show up to teach, we want to give, but at the same time, we want to make sure that we are not enabling the takers and that we are holding certain standards because these are sacred pathways that need to be respected. And it is your job as a teacher to uphold that standard and to say, okay, I'm giving you the most valuable thing on earth. All I ask for is that you pay me a, just a reasonable amount. It shouldn't be free. And that you show up to class consistently and on time because I'm going to be here for you consistently and on time. So I would like the same respect back. I don't think that's a lot to ask for what students are asking for, right? So it's important that we balance the energetics of the giving and taking and that we show up to serve 
not to just be at their service. There is a difference between showing up to serve and showing up to be at their service. Showing up to serve means that you are willing to do what is right for the greater good of all, even if they don't necessarily like you very much. Like I recently had a student tell me that I needed to take a class in customer service because I refused to like see her at a certain time of the day. And I'm thinking to myself, well, I'm not, I know this already because I've been teaching for so long and practicing for so long. But what's going on in her head is she thinks she's paying me. And because she's paying me, I'm supposed to just drop dinner and go teach her and outside of my working hours. And that would enable her to you know, do all the other supposed priorities that she has in her life, like going to get her nails done and her hair appointment and all of these things that are so important to her. And I'm supposed to be at her service as her yoga teacher because I'm just a yoga teacher. When in reality, if I hold the right space and I say, and I show up to serve and I explain to her that what she's asking for is valuable and that I am a good teacher and she needs to show up on time to her class, what needs to happen then is she's going to have to realign the priorities in her life. She's going to have to maybe move that hair appointment a little bit and show up to class on time. And so you know, she might not necessarily like it that I'm not at her service, but by holding certain standards, I'm actually serving her because she's learning and she's realigning her life to do what she says she wants to do. She says she wants to heal. She wants to feel less anxious. She wants to feel less pain. Whatever it is, she needs to put in the effort. So when you show up to serve and you show up with leadership, that is what happens. And that is helpful for everyone involved. As we go into our classes, some Sometimes we're not holding the right space and that's why we end up getting drained and feeling resentful. A lot of the times you might even walk into a class trying to like protect your energy because you're so tired from your day at work and from all the other classes you were teaching all day. And what that does is it actually encourages more transference because you're in a place of fear. You don't want negative energy, but because that's your focus, you actually end up attracting more negative energy. So in order to change that dynamic, it's really important that you have some stability in your business, in your life, in your finances, with your business and your schedule, so that when you show up, you could actually be a channel of light and show up fearlessly to give 10 times as much as they paid you for because you have it to give, because you didn't spend your day at a corporate job completely burned out or teaching another 10 classes in the morning and now this is your 11th class of the day. So this is also why it's important to show up to serve from a spiritually aligned place and show up as a leader because it really helps you and your students. And the way that we do this is the minute a student walks in the door, we're already in teacher space. The minute they raise their their hand and they say, I want to learn more about your classes, instead of saying, this is my schedule and these are my prices, we take the time to lead that interview. So they call you and right away you begin to take charge of that interview process. You understand what their needs are and you explain your more value properly and just right there at the door by saying to them um the way that I work is I work on this 90 day program and you have to sign up for x amount of weeks and I'm going to give you the syllabus and this is what we're going to learn etc cetera, etc cetera. just by doing that they actually feel supported and they step forward feeling like, oh my goodness, thank you. I am being helped now. And they're so grateful. So the third thing that we need to create a successful yoga business is a student manifestation system, right? There's a Zen saying that says roots need water, leaves need light, trunk okay. And so in order for your business to function properly, you need to have a constant stream of leads. And there's so many ways to get leads. So for example, if you are a social media person and you don't have to be, a lot of us are really shy and we don't like social media, but if you're comfortable with social media, there's so many ways you can offer like free quizzes or free guides or little videos that are informational that then lead the person to the next step. If you're a Facebook 
Facebook person, there's Facebook groups, and I actually teach you a specific method that's a three day launch where you, the first day, you tell them, I'm looking for three women who are suffering from this pain point and they want to get this result. And then the second day, you put in some testimonials and you have a call to action for either them to watch mini training that you've created or for them to get on the phone with you. And all of this could also be used in Instagram or TikTok or LinkedIn, whatever your platform is if you're a social media person. But if you're not a social media person, you can do other things. There's Google My Business, there's local Google Ads, there's Google AdWords. There's so many ways that people can find you on the internet nowadays. There's listing services like Thumbtack and Bark and Lessons.com and a lot of local directories and networking and events and wellness fairs. So for all of these methods, the most important thing is that you have a clear message, a clear pain that you're solving, a clear problem that you're solving, and a clear result of what they are going to get when they join your program. So the messaging has to be spiritually aligned and the platform that you use has to feel good in your body in order for these lead generation systems to work. The second thing that you need is you need to communicate your value properly. So when students walk in the door, you need to get to know them. You want to ask them, what prompted you to book this call today? What are you struggling with? And a lot of the times they'll just be very superficial at first and they'll just say to you, well, I was just curious about yoga. And you want to say, why? Well, because, you know, I was, I, my husband and I are fighting. And so we went to therapy and the therapist told me to just go learn some meditation. So that's why I'm looking for yoga. So now you have a deeper understanding, right? Of why they're really here. They might say to you, you know, my chiropractor, I go to him two, three times a week and I, oftentimes after a few months, there's still not a lot of progress or they make progress, they get relief, but it's not sustainable. So the chiropractor sends them to do some yoga, right? Why? Because yoga is so holistic and it helps the body in so many ways. And so now you understand they're not just curious about yoga. They're suffering from a certain pain that is draining so much energy out of their life. They might come to you and say they're suffering from sleep or anxiety or depression. And you want to really take the time to understand why they are there. The second thing is you want to put the idea in their mind that what they're experiencing right now is not normal and it doesn't have to be that way. And you want to get them to just envision themselves in this healed place. Place. So when you're on that interview call talking to them, don't get so caught up in just the pain that they're struggling with. Go ahead and help them to see themselves in a new place so that you can then explain to them, okay, I can get you from this place to that place. And you want to ask them what has worked, what hasn't, what they've tried, why, why it didn't work, so that when you present your offer, you can address those issues. A lot of the times people hesitate to follow you and sign up for your program because maybe they've tried other things before that didn't work and they want to know why you're different and they're afraid that they're going to sign up for yet one more other thing and it's not going to work for them. And I can understand that and you want them to be able to say that out loud and explain to you what they've tried and why they think it didn't work so that you can explain to them why your program is different. Sometimes you might even just come to the fact that, you know, at the time they were not focused enough on creating this change, but now they've suffered enough. And so now it's the right time to create that change and put in the work that they need to put in. And then what you want to do is you want to present your offer and you want to present your offer and you want to connect connect the dots and you want to say to them, okay, so I'm Sarah and I help people just like you to go from this pain point to this result. And the way that I do it is this, and you're going to give them the three things that you do to help them create that change in their life. And you're going to connect the dots. So for example, you can say to them, I am going to show you how to create a daily mindfulness practice so that your mind is more calm and you don't yell at your kids anymore. Do you see how that would be helpful? And you pause and you wait for them to compute. Is it going to be helpful for me to have a daily mindfulness practice? Yeah, probably. 
right? So now they see how your method, your offer, your program is going to help them specifically to solve that problem that they're struggling with. And so you get very clear with how you're going to present your offer so that when you're talking to them, it's just very neutral. These are your needs. This is how I'm going to help you. And this is why it works. And then you want to make sure that you have like a good connection with him. So one of the things that I like to ask my students when I'm interviewing them for my program is I simply ask them, am I the right teacher for you at this time? How do you feel on this phone call right now talking to me? And that might seem a little bit egotistic. Like I'm asking you, yes, yes, because they have to feel it in their gut and they have to connect within and actually think, is she the right teacher for me? Does her energy feel good to me? Do I feel supported? Do I feel aligned? Do I feel like she is knowledgeable and she knows what she's talking about? So don't be afraid to ask that question. You can ask them, do you feel that this is the right program for you? Or is this the right time for you to join this program? Don't be afraid of their answer. Let them think, is this the right program for them? Are they ready to create this change in their life? Have they suffered enough trying to create whatever change they're trying to create on their own? And are they ready to receive some help? And you want to ask them, is now the right time to move forward? And where do you want to go from here? I was on the phone with a potential student the other day, and I'm just silent and just letting her process. I just say, where would you like to go from here? And she literally kind of just stopped and thought for a second, like, what her options are. She could either get off the phone with me and do nothing, or she can try to implement whatever I've given her on her own, or she can decide to maybe step forward and get some help. Like, those are her options. So that simple question, am I the right teacher for you? Is this the right program for you? And are you ready? And where would you like to go from here? Let them step forward on their own. You don't have to push. You don't have to pull. You don't have to sell. You don't have to convince anyone. Just hold sacred space for them to see themselves and step into their own transformation. So these are the three questions that I ask students after I have understood their needs and presented my offer and my method and how I'm going to help them solve their specific problem. I ask them the three questions and I literally give you guys the exact script. I had a student the other day, one of the my mentees who called me and said, hey, I just had to tell you uh, yesterday I got off the phone with a client that I followed the script all the way through. It was amazing. And she put a deposit and she doesn't even, she didn't even ask how much it was. She just said, what's your deposit? And we made, and we scheduled the appointment. So anyway, I thought it was really cool. I hope that was good news and thank you. She didn't even know the price of the program because if you ask these questions correctly, then it's never about the money. When students are not signing up for your program, it has nothing to do with they don't have time, they don't have money, they got to talk to their husband, they got to think about it. All of those objections just go away if you follow the format that I just gave you, which is understand them, Give them a vision of where they want to go, understand what they've tried that hasn't worked, present your offer in a systematic way and explain to them exactly how they're going to help, how you're going to help them, and then give them the choice to step forward on their own. And then money's not an issue. Husbands are not an issue. Time is not an issue. They're just glad to follow because they feel safe and supported by you. So from here, you can implement some of the things that you have learned on your own, or you can get a little bit of help. I mean, when someone comes to you with back pain, you can tell them what they need to do. They need to do Janu Shurshasana, forehead to knee. They need to do Supta Parangustasana, stretch their hamstrings and whatever. You can give them a couple of pictures and they might be able to do this on their own, but also they might get hurt trying to do this on their own, right? Because as an experienced teacher, you have the training and the knowledge to see where things might go wrong and prevent issues before they happen. So that's what you get inside this course. You get the this way, not that way kind of 
leadership and support so that we are going in the right direction, but we're taking the right steps in the right order so that they get you to the right result. So you can implement all of this on your own, but I also have a mentorship program and I will get to know you as a teacher, know exactly what your strengths are and provide customized support. Because just like there is no one size fits all yoga, there's no one size fits all yoga business, you know, trick. Everything is energy and energy is everything. So everything in your business has to be spiritually aligned and I hope to give you that clarity so that we can do it efficiently and successfully. So this is what you get inside of the success and empowerment mentorship program. The first thing you do is you're going to complete an intake form because I want to see where you are in your business and do an analysis so that I can give you a specific guidance. And then there's a welcome video that gives you all of the instructions and the program syllabus. And then we go into a little bit of mindset. So I want to talk about business models, what works and what doesn't. I want to talk about monthly memberships. And if you choose to do that, how to do them properly. If you're running your own yoga teacher training program and you're there yet, I'll teach you how to do that. We're also going to talk about the energetics of money between teachers and students. And we're going to talk about exactly what your vision is. So do you want to teach online? Do you want to teach in person? Do you want your own studio? Do you want to do yoga retreats? Do you you want big classes, small classes. So we're going to get very clear on your vision so that we're moving in the right direction from the beginning. I'm going to teach you exactly how to create your offer. Because again, to me, that container of support is foundational to this process. So I I'm, we're going to take some time in creating an irresistible offer. And I have a couple of modules that are going to walk you through exactly what the templates are. So for example, here, let me see if this will pull up. You have here the PowerPoint slides of how you're going to create your offer and how you're going to present your offer. So then all you have to do is just follow the steps here and it will give you at the end of it exactly what your syllabus needs to be. I'm also going to teach you how to coach a little bit. A lot of the times, um, you know, we're afraid to step forward in leadership and share our knowledge and, and give people guidance. And it was amazing to me when I started in the online industry, how much some of these coaches were charging for coaching programs that simply were not as wise as yoga is. So yoga has a lot of wisdom and we should not be shy from sharing that wisdom. So we're going to create your syllabus. We're going to teach you how to coach. We have a whole module on the enrollment process, which again, I think it's foundational, the ability to just enroll students from a place of grace. And I literally give you the script that you need. So let me just pull it up here real quick. Whenever you get on a sales call with, all you have to do is read the red questions and you are going to have, you are going to know exactly what to say on this phone calls. And there, I'm also going to teach you what to say when they say to you, um, I don't have the money. I need to ask my husband. I need to think about it. All that you need is right there inside of the modules. So in addition to the enrollment training, we're also going to talk a little bit about lead generation. So when it comes to lead generation, we're going to do the basics because, again, there's a lot of things that you can do in regards to lead generation. But let's say, for example, that you choose to do a three-day launch. I'm going to give you exactly how the Facebook group works, how to set it up, and exactly what to say on day one, day two, day three. All of the scripts that you need are going to be right here for you to just literally fill in the blank. Okay. So when it comes to lead generation, you're going to have everything that you need, just fill in the blanks and launch it. If you're doing networking or wellness fairs, I have some guidance on that. If you are ready to do paid Facebook or Google ads, I want you to do organic first. So you don't need to do paid, but, uh, if you're ready, I will teach you how. And 
In addition to that, we're also going to pay a lot of attention to the energy of the student-teacher relationship and how to avoid transference. We're going to talk about your self-care and the importance of showing up kind of refreshed when you teach your classes, which is part of the reason that I want you to raise your prices so you have time to take care of yourself. And we're going to talk about boundaries. So things like um, attendance policies and cancellation policies and things like that, what to do when you go on vacation and holidays, how do you give yourself a break while giving your students a break, et cetera, et cetera. And then I have lots of other things. So if you have, um, if you need any help with your website or with any tech, how to launch your course, how to you know, present it, whether you are going to do videos or worksheets or whatever, we're going to talk about the tech that's available for that tech that's available for marketing. And I will give you guidance for your specific needs. Um, another template that my students really, really love is this template on how to track your numbers. This one is super helpful. It's going to give you exactly how to structure your schedule. It's going to give you a daily activity tracker. It's going to give you how to track your leads, your enrollment calls, how many leads you're getting. It's also going to tell you how to track your numbers in regards so if you choose to spend some money in advertising, how to see what percentage of your money is going to advertising and whether it's worth it for you to continue to market. It's going to give you cash flow. So if you know you have a, let's see, what's the example here? This program is 2100 and they're paying 350 a month for six months. So what would your cash flow look like? And how many students would you need in order to make, let's say, 100 grand a year? So that is how these templates work. You're going to have everything you need right inside of these modules right here. In addition to the modules, we are meeting once per week live via Zoom directly with me in a small group of no more than six students so that I can really provide customized guidance for your specific scenario. And you also have access to me via this Facebook group where you can come in and just post, you know, this person just posted her syllabus and I reviewed her syllabus and I gave her some guidance. Sometimes there, you know, she's presenting the three pillars of her offer and she's telling me how she's going to present her offer. And I go ahead and I give her guidance on how to present their offer. Oh, by the way, this program is um, approved for Yoga Alliance for CEUs for those of you who need continuing education. So I have this very active group here. She shared with me her presentation of how she's going to do her video. And I gave her some feedback on that. So I am really hands on in here. Somebody sent me this flyer and I gave her feedback on this flyer, you know, so I'm very active on a regular basis here. It's not like I just throw you into this group. I'm going to be holding your hand every step of the way. And in addition to the Facebook group, I also have this app. It's called Voxer, where you can send me text messages or voicemails. If there's anything that I can't cover in the group, then I am available via Voxer and you can just reach out to me there and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. So if you choose to join the program, I guarantee, I am so confident that you're going to absolutely love it and feel so supported and so excited to finally be on your way to a successful and profitable yoga business that if you join and within seven days you change your mind for whatever reason, I'm just going to give your money back. No questions asked. And on top of that, I'm going to give you a double guarantee that if you're attending calls on a weekly basis and doing your homework, this program will bring you results. So if for whatever reason you struggle a little bit, I will continue to coach you until you at least make your money back. So if you feel this class has helped you in any way and it resonates with you and you're interested in knowing a little bit more, I encourage you to just book a call with me. Just click the link below. I will get on the phone with you. We'll get to know each other. I want to know where you've been. I want to know what your vision is for your business. I will also give you specific guidance on things that you can do right now and implement right away to take the next step in the right direction for your business. And and by the end of the call, if you feel like we are aligned and you feel that I can help you, then I'll invite you to the mentorship program. 
And if it's financially hard for you, don't worry about it. I offer payment plans, we'll make it work. And if for some reason it's not the right time for you right now, you're still gonna walk away with whatever guidance I can give you to move your business in the right direction. So the whole goal for me is to talk to as many of you as possible because I genuinely want to help yoga teachers create a sustainable yoga business so that we can go out there and help help some people. The world needs us now more than ever and you have gifts to share. And I do these calls as just from a place of love and genuinely wanting to help anyone who wants to help others. So just follow the link below and I look forward to chatting with you.